Bless the Lord, all you angels, you ministers who do His will. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Here is a true child of Israel. There is no duplicity in him. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. And he said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you. You will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. So today is the Feast of the Archangels, and then on Saturday, it's going to be the Feast of the Guardian Angels. So I pretty much every year I'm reminded of a similar story. My first year when I was in seminary, I was at a seminary out in Columbus, Ohio, called the Pontifical College Josephinum, or the Pojo, as I like to call it. Uh, And I remember having a class on the Catechism, and when we got to the part of the Catechism which spoke of the angels, one of my classmates basically raised his hand and said, "Ah, I don't believe in all that angel stuff. And all of us just kind of sat in awe there in our class thinking, you're going to be a priest. You have to believe in this. So I'm always reminded of that on these feasts of the angels. And I think on these feast days, it's a good time to remember why we know that angels are real. We know firstly from divine revelation, and we know from the scriptures We know that angels and demons are mentioned throughout the Bible, and Jesus himself spoke about angels and demons and about the devil on various occasions. So we know, first of all, from divine revelation. But it's not only because of divine revelation that we know that angels are real. We also know it from the lives of the saints. Some of us, maybe even in our personal life, might have experienced some angelic realities. We also know it from philosophy. Even ancient cultures before Christianity, many ancient cultures, if not most, believed in some version of angels and demons. That was one of the things that the missionaries encountered when they came to North America. They encountered some tribal peoples who were very religious and basically worshiping good spirits and good angels. There were others who worshiped very wicked and evil spirits, like the Aztecs. We know from uh, philosophy, because there's an ancient philosophical argument for the existence of angels, and the argument goes something like this. When you look out at all of creation, and you see the vastness and the diversity of all living creatures, and you see the ranks of creatures, you see creatures that have plant souls, things like trees and flowers, and then you have a slight elevation, you have uh, mobile creatures like pets and animals. And then finally you have humanity, who is a mix of a rational soul and an animal, or as Aristotle says, a rational animal. And so if you have all this diversity of different creatures, if you can literally look out in the world and look out into the yard and look into the grass and see that there are literally thousands of living creatures hidden underneath the surface, all of the ancient people's thought, if that is the case with creatures we can see, Wouldn't it make sense that there would also be a complete reality of creatures which we cannot see? Creatures which are totally invisible, which are pure spirit, which are pure rational souls. And so wouldn't it make sense that there's a whole nother realm of reality to this universe? And sometimes they called them angels and demons, sometimes they called them other things. But it makes sense from a rational perspective that there would be such a thing as angels and demons, a vast realm of invisible creatures. We can also know from history that angels and demons exist, primarily because we can know that the devil is real. 
How can someone with an honest perspective really look at what happened in the 20th century and just toss it all up to political and economic motivations? Clearly something very evil was orchestrating what happened in the 20th century, the bloodiest century on record. And there are even people from history who seem to manifest certain aspects of evil. There was a book written a couple of years ago about Karl Marx called The Devil and Karl Marx. Some of you are familiar with Rasputin, that strange personage from Russia. There's many other people in history who seem to have those same characteristics. There are things that happen in history that are so evil and so supernatural and unexplainable that the only way to really understand it is to posit some sort of demonic force. We as modern Catholics and modern Christians, as we celebrate this feast of the archangels, we should not be ashamed of our belief and we should not feel like we're being naive or just believing these things on blind faith. Angels and demons are real and we know it from divine revelation. We know it from history. We know it from philosophy. We have every reason to believe in these angelic forces always at work and fighting for us and alongside us.